Here on this Debaco University video, we're going to be covering the Eurasian hemp borer proper identification and control as it relates to cannabis. So here we can see pictures of the same plant here when cut away. Clearly there is an insect in there. This is identified as the Eurasian hemp borer and we're going to go through how to properly identify it in a plant and also how to go about controlling it. So first off, just a general description. The Eurasian hemp borer can have negative impacts on cannabis plants. Uh, document it's documented as an economic importance for fiber production. Economic threshold is 10 larvae per plant due to reduction in plant growth and seed production. And see, the problem is that it, it bores into the stem. So here's a cutaway of the stem. We can see definitely a necrotic region here, blackened region. That's where it probably entered and is eating away at the stem, the base of a bud here, but it is internal. So how do we go about identifying uh, the Eurasian hemp borer? And we can see here just some of the adult um, Eurasian hemp borer moths. We also see the pupa evident here. So when we're going through and um, identifying or proper identification of the borer, it has a distinctive characteristics. There's a pinkish, whitish, pale brown uh, larvae with several uh, barely visible pale bri bristles at the body segments. Eurasian hemp borer are small, 7 to 8 millimeters, compared to the corn earworm, which is much larger. So you don't want to confuse the two. Uh, earlier larval instars are difficult to distinguish from the background as they're whitish and cream colored as we saw in that first image. May have two to three generations in the southern United States, so be aware of that. The head is a yellowish to brown coloration and can be dark to uh, black. Uh, it does have light detecting very simple eyes. The late larval instar in the fall is the overwintering stage and can have an orange to reddish coloration, kind of as we see down here. This stage passes the winter in well-sheltered uh, places, such as folded leaves or tunneled, tunneled into stems. The tunneling may cause some stunting and distortion of the stems and stalks. The adults merge during the spring after mating, and they start to lay eggs. In the absence of hemp, they can feed on hops and knotweed, and probably other weeds as well. Adults are small moths, as we see right here, displaying white stripes in their front uh, edges and four chevron-like stripes near the center when expanded. Now the adult, this kind of shows that kind of a little bit more zoomed in version of the adult. They are commonly spread to new locations via infested hemp seeds or debris. Cultivar selection may be important. Wild hemp in Vermont seems to have innate resistance to the pest compared to that wild hemp in the Midwest United States. So that's kind of an interesting discovery there, at least initially. Now what to look for on the actual um, plants is the larva of the infested moth borrows into the stem of the hemp plants making tunnels. So while it looks like we have some wilting going on here and some browning, it's really that internal portion that is of concern. They can also feed on the leaves and later in the season attack seeds as well as flowers. So if you see this die back, go through and investigate the stem. You might have to do a little cutaway and you might find one of these hemp borers. So how do you go about managing um, the hemp borer? Well, the first step should be cleaning, pruning, and disposing of infested plants. Remember, this insect lives in the stems. This is of increased importance if cannabis will be grown in the same location the following year. Removal of wild weeds is also recommended to eliminate alternate hosts. Insecticide application effectiveness is reduced due to the fact that the immature stages live inside the stems. Very difficult to control them there. Systemic products are often not registered or recommended, uh, and that's what it would take to get to the actual location where this hemp ore is located. So this gives you some good information there. Hopefully you don't see it, but if you do, here you're able to properly identify and start to implement control measures.